Kore a ki te runga raua Maunga rongo ki te whenua Whakaaro pai ki ngā tangata kato E aku ranga tira Koutou ko waku piri mai nei A te nā koutou Te nā koutou Te nā koutou A kauri Tātou wakaaro Ki ta unga wairua Rātou kua weturangi tia Ngā mate o tēnei wai, o tēnei taone Rātou te ka ui wairua, aire, aire, hari atu rā Hari atu rā ki tuo o te ārai Ko rātou te unga mate ki te unga mate Ko tātou te unga ora ki te unga ora A kauri atu ki te ao mārama Te mea tuatahi e mi atu ki te iwi kainga, koutou te tangata wenua o te nei wai. Nei rā te mihi mahana ki a koutou. Te mea tuarua e mi atu ki ngā kai kōrero i te nei rā, ki te hāpaitia, ki te wakamana, te wairua. O tēnei ui E ngā wānau E ngā oa Koutou ko ui mai nei A tēnā koutou Tēnā koutou A tēnā tātou katoa Before I get started Can you put your hands up if you have seen songs from the inside? That's not good. <laughs> we need to do something about that. Um, okay, for those of you who don't know what Songs from the Inside is, Songs from the Inside is a music program that we administered um, in New Zealand prisons, with the end goal being that each prisoner that we work with will write their own original song, we will help them record it, and then we'll take those recordings away, mix and master them, and then bring them back to them and give them to them as their tohu or their certificate of achievement. Um, <clears throat> when we first opened this discussion with the Department of Corrections, to ask them if we could do songwriting uh, inside their prisons, we were met with a pretty lukewarm response. <laughs> when we asked them if we could document the whole thing using multiple cameras and create a reality television show, the door was pretty much slammed in our face. <laughs> Fortunately for us, we're on the outside. <laughs> Um, but you know, the world's a funny place, and it's not always about what you know, it can be about who you know as well. So I knew a person who had some power, and without asking them to abuse that power, they made a phone call. Suddenly the door was ajar, just a little, so we put our foot in there and stepped through. And we had a moment, we had an audience with the corrections department, one opportunity to pitch our idea. And that's all it was, it was just an idea. Let's go and teach songwriting in prison. And the first question that they asked is why? Yeah. And hindsight's a great thing. I could give you lots of reasons now that I've been through the process, but at that time, I didn't know. I was faking it. <laughs> and I, there was different things at play. You know, I'm human, so I've got ego. And there was this producer hat I was wearing going, prison, yeah, that sells. <laughs> music, yeah, music sells. That's always been a seller. Put them together, we've got prison idol. So we didn't really know what we're doing. 
But like I heard someone saying today, you just keep doing it, you fake it until you make it. Anyway, one thing we did know is that if we gave prisoners the opportunity to tell their story through a song, then that would be a way of communicating to all of us, the wider world, the community, that would be more readily acceptable. We all know this, that music has a power. You're having a bad day, you go home, you put on some music, it can change your emotional space. Music can cut through cultural barriers. Music doesn't define between rich and poor. Humans do. And anyway, if through this songwriting process, we're working with these prisoners, if just one prisoner did not return to prison, that was job done. 60% of prisoners that leave prison reoffend within the first three months. Now, we weren't the first people to teach songwriting in prison. In fact, we called on somebody who had done it before, Evan Reese davies And he had taught songwriting in Spring Hill Prison in the Waikato. And Evan actually helped us design a course for this. But Evan is talented as he is, wasn't gonna be enough. We needed something, we needed a twist. Television's a hungry machine, it gobbles up content. If you wanna be heard in the television world, you gotta shout loud above the pack. Our plan was we would get established New Zealand artists to mentor the prisoners through the songwriting process. We wanted to empower these people, but to do that, we had to push them out of their comfort zone so that they could realize their own potential. But to do that, we had to get their trust. That's where we called on help again. Jim Moriarty is an actor who's worked for several years inside prisons. And he taught prisoners how to tell their story through performance. And one thing that Jim told us was that if you want these guys to open up to you, you've got to be prepared to do the same. Corrections said yes. We were like, yay! We're just gonna do this. We're gonna make prison idle. It's gonna be popular. We're going to win awards. <laughs> so I had to go and meet the prisoners. And one by one, as they started to re reveal their story to me, and the reasons that they wanted to do this, a heavy weight came on me. I realized these are not statistics. These are people. And now, I had to ensure that their stories were treated with respect. So, with this new weight on my shoulders and really not knowing how this was all gonna end, songs from the inside began in autumn of 2011. I'm all here to see what I can give these women and to see what creatively can come out of it for them. I'm scared that these women will bring out a part of me, a sensitive side to me, which I don't like showing to people too much because it's, it means you're vulnerable. I actually feel quite alive, mainly because it's the prospect of starting a new project. It feels like it actually means something. It's already given me chills down my spine just thinking about it now. I'm truly thankful for you guys coming in and giving us this uh, opportunity. 
somehow amongst all of this, we're going to find a message or feeling after being so numb for so long. My life's been so hard and I made the wrong choices, yeah. You just need a bridge in there just to break it so it gives it the contrast. No, see, yeah, I can't do it. Yes, you can. A few issues inside, you know, I haven't dealt with. All they have to do is provide the human spirit. The fatherland mine. We're both getting something out of this, not just them. The my ground. No matter what the circumstances, where you are in life, it's never too late. I'm absent, feeling simply a vacant. I remember the days holding you in the palm of my hand. Their memories are more precious than silver and gold. I didn't do it for fame, I didn't do it just to jump on TV. I've done it for my children. Life is what you make it. Um, this whole project, it wasn't just about the mentor and the student, it was about the audience as well. Our hope was that the audience watching this at home would see all the ups and downs, but they'd also be taking on the lessons that the students were learning in the hope that they would find their song on the inside. What this project has taught me is everyone has a song on the inside. We're born with it, and it's our story of generations that have come before to our present reality, and it's our hope for the future. A lot of us, our song is suppressed. It's suppressed through our environment, through our world, through our daily lives, and we fail to sing. Some of us are blessed, and they sing loudly, but the rest of us have really got to work hard at it. What I've learned through songs from the inside, through these people, some of the most vulnerable in our community, through their honesty, through their trust, and through their belief, they've taught me how to shed my own skin, to pull back my own layers so that I can sing my song. Now, if you watch the nightly news or read the newspaper, you wouldn't really think there's much hope in the world. But as I look around this room, I see good people. And when good people are gathered for good reasons, great things can happen. And I think that's a legacy of this TED, Co-Papa, this TED initiative, TEDx Christchurch. Great things can happen. In the prisons, people were volunteering every day to go in there and help because they believe that something positive can come out of it. They believe that by helping somebody, putting a hand out, helping them and pulling them forward, they can make a difference. We televised our experience, but it's happening every day. In the first series, and how this was all created as a way to keep us safe, we did everything under a kopapa Māori. Through our rituals, we were able to create a space where people can feel safe to share their innermost thoughts. In the second season, we really wanted to prove that Māori-led initiatives, Māori-led kaupapa, are not just good for Māori. They can be worthwhile for the whole community. We had Pacific Island, we had Pākehā, and we had Māori students in the second series. In the second series, we had Pacific Island, we had Pākehā, and we had Māori mentors. In this third and final series, 
that we shot this year here in Christchurch, we knew about the pain that this place had been through. We knew about the hurt that still existed here. So we wanted to ensure that the people who mentored these students had a connection here. That meant bringing back Scribe, the Christchurch artist with New Zealand's longest running number one hit. That meant bringing back the multi-platinum, Anika Moore. And that meant bringing this wonderful lady who I'd like to invite on the stage, Christchurch's own, the multi-talented Lady Six. <laughs> Love you, baby. Um, when I was invited to uh, be a part of Songs from the Inside, I, um, I felt like I had this unique opportunity to be a more uh, sort of helpful uh, person in the community. I felt like that as an artist, this would be something where I had an opportunity to kind of give back. I thought that I'd be able to help these um, imprisoned women in a positive way and sort of like yeah, help their musical dreams come true kind of thing. Uh, I thought that, you know, going into, before I went into it, I thought that the stories that I would share with them um, would, about myself, would be about uh, struggle, be, me being a struggling Pacific Island Christchurch-born musician um, from a poor but proud family, and I thought that that this fact might uh, endear me to them, that it might open them up, that they might be able to relate to me a little bit better and, uh, and that that would connect us. Uh, I basically just thought that something about me uh, would help these women in some way. Um, and I was wrong. In fact, uh, I quickly realized the show wasn't really about me at all. And watching back now, as it plays every Monday night, um, I realize that it's, it's not only not about me, but it's not even about music. And uh, it's not even about musical talent. I didn't have to endear myself to these women. Um, they auditioned. They auditioned to be on the show. They wanted to be on the show. Uh, they volunteered. And they were already, uh, you know, straight away from talking the, to them, they were already wide open and ready to just expose themselves. Uh, they had powerfully brutal and often hard to hear and comprehend stories of their background and of the crimes. And uh, basically, they didn't even need to hear my story. Um, in volunteering themselves, to be on the show and in volunteering their faces and their stories to be shown on TV for eight weeks for an hour, half an hour. Uh, and for them and their crimes and their backgrounds to be displayed on TV like that nationally, uh, they were making the ultimate decision to be seen and to be judged, but also to be heard by us all. And this decision of theirs, I think, is the most powerful message that Songs from the Inside brings to our small screen. Um, so, like, listening to their stories and, uh, and sitting with these women, it really struck me um, how important and deserving their stories were to be heard, and, and that, in fact, their stories um, are our stories, and these women were our women. And, uh, and they just needed a platform to share in the hope that, like all of us, that they could be understood. Songs from the Inside is a television program that really highlights and displays the strength of the human spirit of our most dangerous, but also our most vulnerable in our community. We have a special guest, and uh, it's with great pleasure now that I introduce to you our very own, uh, Mr. Tama Peter. We're so lucky to have him here. He's a graduate from season one, and he's here. Please help me welcome.
Well, uh, I've had a few well factors lately. First time I came on the plane. First time I had room service. <laughs> Much love to uh, TEDx. It was amazing. Uh, songs from inside. I'm going to start a little bit before it. Uh, I found I was in jail for taking somebody's life. Um, in there trying to find a way out of my darkness. Found a way it was God. Just, and I followed him for about four years, hard out praying, praying, and in, in jail we study together as a group of guys about the word of God, and um, we're going through about asking God, what's our gifts? So I'm asking God, you know, what's my gift? And uh, I get this message in my head, music. And I'm like, nah, 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 not me. I just, I only do that when I'm on alcohol and drugs. It, it can't be that. So I'll try again, Lord, what's my gift? Music. And then so I had some physical brothers that told me the same thing. So I said, okay, Lord, and I believe you. I prayed hard on my soul and asked them that night, I have these gifts, what do you want me to do with it? What do you want me to do with it? Six, six weeks later, uh, one of our officers, Glenn Bailey, whom I say big thank you to him, he uh, saw an email that came through the prison system, his songs from the inside. And then me being me, I was full of anger and bitterness, and I always used to come home after work from prison, because we had outside jobs, and I'll sit on my step to wind down or jam. I'd just make up songs on the spot. It was my way of expressing my feelings. I could be feeling really angry and hurt, but I'd sing a song about love. Uh, and just found their peace. So when songs, came, songs from the inside came along, it, it just was an answer to, to prayer. You know, watch out what you ask God for. He'll give it. I asked him for a new life. If you see my old video, I had dreadlocks. I was an ex-gang member. Been in and out of prison most of my life. And here I am today. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Try and fight the tears. Uh, if they, if they fall out, it's just a tear of joy. <laughs> um, I asked myself the question, why did I do this? At first I was a bit arrogant, still lost in my gangster way. You know, and nah, I'm not doing this. But this officer put my name forward, Glenn Bailey. He told me he believed in me. That, uh, he was proud of me. You know, that's all we need. Just a little bit of hope can change someone like me. You know, just a little bit. You know, we have strangers like uh, Sonny said. People come and visit us. They, they don't get no money. They're bringing love and telling us that we're special. Uh, for me, songs from the inside was a bridgeway from my old life to a new life, from the cage to the stage. Uh, um, we're all good people, we just make mistakes. There's a whole world full of people like that. I'm sure we all made mistakes. Just some of us made bigger ones than others. Um, you know, if you get the chance just to say hello to some inmate out there, you'll change their lives, trust me. An old guy named Vic Gasby came to me in prison and said that God sent him to me. Yeah. He walked with me for a whole year. I had period genitals for nine years in jail, had no family visit. So God knew I needed someone, so he bought this old fellow, and he bought me some shoes, jandals, undies, singlet. And songs from the inside gave me a voice to, to sing. And I didn't think I could sing, but today I believe I can. Um, what did I get out of this? I'm free. I found freedom in cage through music. I'm empowered. I'm a somebody. Today I used to feel like a nobody. Always told I was useless, no good for nothing. Well, watch out for me, I'm coming. <laughs> I have a full time job today. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. People helping people is the solution to a better tomorrow, I reckon. Wow. What was it like for me? Amazing. Uh, much love to all the brothers and sisters that are out there and all those that came to us, all those musicians, 
TEDx for this. This was amazing. <laughs> you know, far out, I'm on stage. <laughs> um, my last question to myself would be, how does it feel? Well, James Brown would say, I got the feeling. <laughs> nah, <laughs> cut that one out. <laughs> how has it changed me? I feel uh, free to be able to stand here. I represent all of them. I'm standing for them. Please, we people too. We just mucked up. Uh, much love to you all. Bless everybody in here, your hearts, your souls. Everybody that was in the background and in the front and on the side. <laughs> Gonna... Sit here. I'm going to do something a bit weird. Um, gonna just, I had a song arranged, but I think I'm going to try a freestyle on you, one, eh? I'm glad I practiced, I didn't really need the card. So we are going to do a song together because I couldn't resist. <laughs> I had to get my chance to do a song with Tama. Um, but we're also going to ask you guys if you can do it with us. So uh, to practice this part that I want you to play in the song, when I sing, um, see you tomorrow, I need you to repeat, see you tomorrow. Okay. So. Let me put it in context for you in the chorus. Um, so it goes. <clears throat> okay, so it goes like this. <clears throat> 
gonna walk right up into the light See you tomorrow Now your turn Okay, you got it, you got it Okay, okay you ready? You gonna jam with me? If we don't, I hate it if we do. I'm not sure if we ever really knew or we'll ever really know. Stories twisted as it's been told. Hard to handle all through my day. I get the feeling like you want to walk away. But please don't say it again. I want to hear why do we leave ourselves open all these years? Yeah. And ever since. I feel like I know you, so when we talk, all I want to do is get closer. Maybe hold you, it's not needed. As long as in my heart, I know that you believe it. Do you still believe me when I say we're going to make it one day? We're going to walk right up into the light. See you tomorrow. Your turn. Beautiful. See you tomorrow. We're gonna walk right up into the light. See you tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. Beautiful. See you tomorrow. Again, we talk or just sit down. I need to tell you what I have found to be true and righteous. True and righteous. Of love and laughter, of hardship after a lifetime captured. Well, can you spare me some time to let me speak my mind? I put myself in the center. I'm on the front line. Yeah. Said I'm on the front line. And I'm on the front line. Uh, when the shit's going. Tomorrow. 